This is 2018 AMC 12B problem number 23. Here's a view of this problem. We're given a point A and its uh, latitude and uh, longitude on, uh, on Earth. Um, uh, uh, and similarly, the point B and its uh, latitude and longitude on Earth. And we are told to assume that Earth is a perfect sphere shape. Um, and we need to find the area, uh, the, the, the angle measurement of uh, this uh, ACB where C stands for the center of that sphere. Uh, so let's go ahead and draw a, a simple sketch. And let me remind you of a few facts uh, before we go further. Um, so these are the longitudinal lines. And we have, um, um, we have the uh, latitude lines as well. So the equ equator would be the zero degree uh, latitudinal line. And the longitudinal line uh, zero degrees. I don't know if you guys remember from your geography classes. So this is, well, it is believed that it is the line that goes through London. And how many um, latitude lines do we have? We have, uh, I think on the northern hemisphere, we have 90 uh, degrees, right? So, so you can go up like 10, 20 and so on, right? Does that make sense? All the way up to 90 degrees. The top would be 90 degrees. Here would be 90 degrees. Uh, in terms of uh, the latitude lines. Huh? So these are the latitudes. Latitudes. And for the, um, well, 90 degrees on the northern hemisphere and 90 degrees on the southern hemisphere, obviously. And when uh, you focus your attention on the uh, longitude lines, as we said, London is the center. So this is zero degree. You can either go to the, uh, to the east or to the west. Uh, and so, and then we ha we, we would have, uh, we can easily find our points. For instance, the point A is on the zero degree latitude, which I already did draw, right? So this is the equator and it is uh, east 110 degrees. Remember that we have in total 360 degrees uh, on the longitudes, right? So, um, so this is one of these lines here. And so our point A here is, is somewhere here and it's on the 115 degree uh, east longitude. And for, uh, for, uh, for this location in the US, it is 45, uh, sorry, 115 degree west. So somewhere on the other side like that west of London, if you wish. And in terms of um, the latitude, it is 45 degree. So that one is, so what the, what's the meaning of the latitude? Let me uh, remind you of how the things can look like. Let me get rid of London. <laughs> it's very confusing. Um, but anyhow, uh, so if you think of this as the center of your sphere, what it means is that this, the angle measurement here Oops, sorry for that. This is supposed to be the radius of our sphere here. And whatever is your point here. Um, so that angle here is 45. And this is our point B, by the way. Um, so this kind of reminds us we are on a sphere. This is just um, something called spherical coordinates. Spherical coordinates. Um, this is another way to represent... Uh, a point in space. You can represent a point in space. We are used to represent a point in three-dimensional space as x, y, z. But we can also represent the same point in terms of these spherical coordinates. For example, uh, so let me use the green color. So remember that uh, so this is the uh, and this, is, this is the zero degree uh, longitude line, right? So the line that goes through uh, London. Uh, so I can uh, I can first on on this plane uh, on the e equator uh, equator plane I can uh, take my radius and I can first I decide to go how many degrees 115 degrees to the west and then I go up 45 degrees. So that makes perfect sense, right? So this way we can kind of huh, identify objects. So uh, let's let's go ahead and do that. In, 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 let me redraw this picture here. Um, so something like, uh, I guess like that. So this is like the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Does that make sense? 
And so we decided, um, so we have our point A. Because eventually the question is asking for an angle, I can rescale my uh, drawing such that this center here end up being here. So that's our point C. The point A, I can put it, I can orient my uh, X, Y, Z coordinates such that uh, uh, it, it collapses on A. And I can say that A has the coordinates 1, 0, 0. C is obviously the origin, 0, 0, 0. Um, so the first thing I want to do is to rotate it 100 and, uh, sorry, sorry. Um, so do you see that thing here? So A is uh, 110, deg uh, 110 degrees east and east of here. And the other one is 115. Combined, they are uh, 225 degrees. Well, obviously, this is like a 360 minus 360 it would give us minus 135 so therefore what we do is um let me change my color so maybe red so you can start here on the x-axis and you can start revolving we need to go all the way 225 so which is if this is your minus x-axis you go past that and boom so it is on this uh direction right so it's like you go in that way um, and then, so that would be the point, say, B prime. Does that make sense? B prime. Where, um, um, well, not really. That's not the point. <laughs> um, so the point I'm considering is this one, the, the, the projection of this. Sorry for that. So this is a 90. So this is the B prime. Sorry, this one. This is a projection. And now I need to go up to the point B, right? So I need to go up. That's where my point B is. But where is it exactly? So it's not that bad to uh, to figure where uh, the B prime uh, would be in terms of the X and the Y coordinates. But uh, the Z coordinate is something that we would have to uh, actually calculate. Well, one thing I know for sure is the distance from B to C is also 1. So this distance was 1. This is also 1. So here the turn that I did was uh, 110 plus 115, 200 and, um, what, 25 degrees, right? I went past the first uh, um, quadrant, the second, and I'm in the third uh, quadrant. First is I need that distance between C and B prime. So look that. This angle here is 45 degrees. We have a right angle here, another 45 degree here. So we have an isosceles right triangle. And indeed, the hypotenuses are as well. So the, this R is the whole thing, radius, right? So R. So therefore, uh, the legs of this uh, isosceles right triangle would be just uh, R over root 2, right? But in our case, R is just 1. We scaled it to 1, right? So therefore, B prime C as well as B, B prime. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Okay, okay, so let's take it slowly. So B prime C, first of all, so this distance here would be 1 over root 2. Does that make sense? But from here, we can easily find out, so the coordinate here, oh, sorry for that, ah, so 3D is hard to imagine. So this one, I should say, right? And then this one, I'm on the XY plane. Remember that B prime is on the XY plane. Uh, so 1 over root 2, but this angle here, 225 minus 180 is 45. So this one is also 45, right? So therefore, uh, it's not, uh, it won't be uh, too hard. So let's call this B prime of X and this one is B prime of Y. Uh, so you have a right triangle here. And from there, 1 over root 2 is your hypotenuse. As a result, uh, we can find the two legs uh, as um, 1 over root 2 divided by root 2, which is just 1 half. Does that make sense? So 1 half here, 1 half here. And so that's perfect. So, so therefore, we, we have the two coordinates of B, which is uh, uh, 1 half and 1 half. Well, actually, both of them minus, sorry for that, because we are in the third uh, um, quadrant, uh, third region. And finally, how do I find the Z coordinate? Well, the Z coordinate can be easily calculated in this right triangle now, because the hypotenuse is 1, one of the legs is 1 over uh, root 2. So therefore, BB prime, huh? so let's put it here, BB prime uh, squared plus uh, 1 over root 2 squared, 1 over root 2 square is supposed to be equal to one square so therefore bb prime uh, square is equal to one half uh, one 
or maybe I should say plus one half is equal to one. So therefore we have BB prime square is equal to one half or BB prime is equal to one over root two. And boom, uh, there you go. Um, so that's, uh, that's pretty much the coordinates of the point B. Now we can go ahead and calculate the angle, uh, uh, the angle ACB. So the angle ACB. And for that, I will make use of, again, a double counting type of argument. I will uh, calculate the, uh, the, the, the dot product of the vectors, uh, the vector A and B in two different ways. So we have the vector A, which is, uh, so the vector A and the vector B, you can calculate the dot product here. You can, uh, so as, well, uh, the product uh, of their lengths, which is 1 times 1, right, uh, times uh, the degree angle, the cosine of the degree angle between the two, which is ACB. So that's one way to calculate it. But an alternative way making use of their coordinates would be huh, uh, 1 times minus uh, 1 times uh, minus 1 half plus uh, 0 times minus 1 half plus 0 times minus 1 over, sorry, plus 1 over root 2, and that's just minus 1 half, and that's it. Setting these two equal to each other, that would give us cosine of angle ACB is just minus 1 half. Um, cosine 60 degrees would be 1 half, so therefore cosine 180 minus 60, cosine 120 would be minus 1 half, so therefore the desired angle ACB is just uh, 120 degrees, and uh, that solves this problem. There's a couple of alternative ways to solve it. If you check again on AOPS, there's uh, there's a really uh, some some really nice uh, solutions uh, out there as well. Uh, I'll, I'll just uh, leave it to you to to check those uh, discussion forums for some uh, interesting uh, ideas. So obviously this solution is kind of advanced. This is the more natural uh, idea that comes to mind when solving this problem. Obviously once the competition is over um, and you look back. You can find some fancy solutions, much faster troll solutions. But uh, as I said, so the, the first natural solution that comes to mind in this case is uh, spherical coordinates. Let me just give you just a slight idea. One more thing that I think I, I kind of, I wasn't very clear on my presentation. Let me uh, just tell you what would be the coordinates and the, uh, how to convert from spherical to uh um, rectangular coordinates, right? So if you have a point in space, say this point uh, X, Y, Z, the coordinates of this point, this point P, this is the uh, origin O. So the way to uh, calculate uh, the location here is clear, right? So you can first have a projection of this point onto the X, Y plane. This is X, Y plane. This is the Z. Obviously, you can project it onto Z and so it's not that bad to find the z here but um for the x and y so it would look like this so this is the x component and that would be the y component right so the whole point and obviously this looks like a rectangular shape where okay let me complete it into a full rectangle if you will oops like that um uh, so it would look like this and then it would go up uh like that uh, maybe I need to, um, yeah, so stop here. And finally, you can go up all the way up to here and then complete it here. Plane, so that's the plane in a sense, right? So we have this right, uh, nice rectangle, uh, rectangular prism, if you will. And there the name rectangle uh, coordinates. But uh, so how... An alternative way to represent these coordinates would be the following. So let me draw probably the green color here. What you can do is you can first uh, look at this thing here, uh, this point, which is the projection of P. Uh, so remember, this was our point P. So let's call it P uh, prime. And you can have a look at this angle here. So let's call this angle as theta. So starting from the... Uh, uh, from the real axis, uh, so, I mean the positive x-axis, you can make a theta rotation and then you can go in another dimension, you can make this uh, uh, on the plane uh, P O P prime, you can uh, uh, make this uh, upwards uh, vertical um, rotation, right? So there's two rotations and you can call this angle as 
theta. So if the radius here is R, so OP prime is uh, R, you can, uh, so we have a right triangle here, that's a right angle, <laughs> believe it or not, and then uh, there is obviously another uh, right triangle here, so therefore you can express the coordinates x, uh, y, and z quite easily uh, using these coordinates. For example, uh, z, I believe, is the easier one to figure. Um, uh, z would be, um, yeah, so because uh, OP prime is r, and this angle here is phi, uh, z, which is this distance here, is the same as this distance over here, and it is, you can relate it in terms of cosine of angle phi, right? Cosine of angle phi would be the, huh? So, um, so z would be what? r cosine phi, I guess? Oh, my bad, my bad. So, r is this distance. It's o r, sorry. Sorry, o p is r. Sorry, not this one. Not the projection. Obviously, we are interested in the, in the distance from p to the center, not that one. Sorry for that. So, it's uh, r... Um, so, z, z would be r sine phi. Sorry for that. R sine phi. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. All right. And X and Y in that sense, for X and Y, we need to first... R, so this distance OP prime here would be R cosine of phi. And once we have that distance, we can apply again the sine of angle theta to find the Y distance and the cosine to find the, the, um, the X distance. So therefore, it would be R cosine of phi times cosine of theta and for y it would be r cosine of phi that would give us this distance op prime and then we can check the sine of that angle which will yes so that would make sense sine of theta and boom um well it's customary to write it like this so let me just delete this one and the, this is kind of the uh, this is the spherical coordinates right so well uh, so you can go from the angles to find the rectangular coordinates pretty easily, right? Does that make sense? And once you have the rectangular coordinates, you can try to measure the angles to give you the spherical representation as well. So that solves uh, this uh, really nice problem uh, and hope to see you guys uh, in our next lecture.